Zaragoza, or Zaragoza, as the locals say. High above the city stands the statue of King Alfonso I of Aragon. Dubbed the Battler or the Warrior, Alfonso reclaimed the city from the Moors 900 years ago. And he made it the new capital of his Christian kingdom. The Baroque Basilica del Pilar on the River Ebro is one of Zaragoza's famous landmarks and a popular pilgrimage site. Local resident Carlos Rivas Horta is an expert on the city's heritage. Aragon went through two periods of prosperity. First, in the 11th century, when the Moorish, Jewish and Christian cultures intermingled and influenced each other. And again in the 16th century, the Ebro was used to ship goods from the Mediterranean to the north of Spain using small boats. The various architectural styles reflect its colorful past. The al Jafariya Palace dates back to the 11th century and was a symbol of Moorish supremacy. It was built in the style of Arabian desert palaces and served as a model for the Alhambra in Granada. The Moors brought paper to Al-Andalus, the name they gave to Spain. Before that, paper didn't exist in Europe. They also introduced algebra. That's why we use Arabic numerals. And the concept of zero is something the Arabs brought with them from India. That's also where the game of chess was invented. So Al-Andalus was the first European country where chess was played. When the Catholic kings took over power from the Moors, they expanded the palace. This is the throne room. One of the city's famous residents was the painter Francisco de Goya. Born in 1746 near Zaragoza, he lived in the city during his youth. The Museum of Zaragoza is the only one in the world to own a complete collection of Goya's etchings, works which pay testament to the vividness of his imagination. The background is often made up of a very dry landscape resembling the Ebro Valley, and you can almost feel the wind that is so typical of our region. The many pastry shops selling chocolate specialties and candied fruit are also typical of the city. Visitors can find out more about this tradition on special tours. Monks at a nearby monastery brought back chocolate from Mexico in 1537, introducing it to Europe. They began experimenting with it. Initially, this dish of the gods was first enjoyed as a drink. Chocolate was then passed on from monastery to monastery. Through the monks, it reached France, Germany, Belgium, and that's how chocolate culture developed. For those who prefer savory foods, the historical downtown offers a vast number of tapas bars to explore. Jose Robles has won several competitions with his tapas. There is rabbit with vegetables, liver, and black trumpet mushrooms. Then egg with white truffles from the Piedmont. Cod with olive oil, boiled potato, and garlic mayonnaise. Then there's duck and red wine with vegetables. All classical cuisine. It's a lot of work, but that's what it takes if you want to eat well. Indeed, a trip to a tapas bar with friends is the perfect way to end a day in Zaragoza.